We're looking at the granddaddy of HPA guns in this episode of the Gear Guide. So after three years of hard use, my Force CRS was long overdue for a heart transplant. So what did I do? I called up the guys at Polar Star, put in an order, and sent this beast off. And I wanted to have the pros do it for me. It's one thing, I could have bought an engine and put it in myself, and that's great. But I've had some fantastic experience having the Polar Star guys tune my teammates Polar Stars up, so I figured why not send this thing off and get it done right the first time. And I'm gonna tell you what, I didn't regret it one bit. So what they installed was the new third gen V2 engine. Of course, this is the V2 because it is an M4 platform. They of course have other platforms as well. If you guys run AK, they have a version three. They also have an M249 mech box. So the Fusion engine, which is the original Polar Star, that huge drop in CNC machine beast of an HPA system will work in just about any popular gun you're gonna find. Now obviously when you wander outside of the M4s, the version three AK kind of platform and the M249s, you get some unique ones, but Polar Star does have an option for those, but we're not gonna get into it because this is a review about the Fusion engine. So the way the Fusion engine works, you actually have the main system, which like I said, is CNC machine designed and patented all here in the USA. Behind that, which lives in the buffer tube in this gun, is the FCU, which is the fire control system, the fire control unit. Now in that fire control unit, you actually have a little circuit board and a little joystick control button so you can set every setting. And what I like about the Polar Star is everything is infinitely adjustable. Where some other systems make you do it in like five increments if you want to tune something up and down, Polar Star does it in one steps for everything. For how long the air nozzle goes back to how long the air nozzle actually returns forward and the delay and how long the valve stays open. Everything is infinitely adjustable, including the rate of fire. You can sign it all the way back down to like 10 rounds a second if you want to shoot that low, or you can go to 30, they say on the manufacturer specs, but trust me when I tell you this, you can go far above 30 on these systems. So the way the nozzles work, you have different color coded nozzles and they step up from like, I think down in the blue on the bottom end, all the way up to red on the high end. Now in mine, because they put that low flow pop it in, it does change the bands that they operate in. Normally the red is really hard. It's gonna shoot way above most field limits, but the way they built this around that was for efficiency. Again, one of my future things, don't have it on yet, as you can tell here, is I wanna add one of those red line stock like with the tanks that go on the back of the gun so I won't have the external line. But until then, I do have the external line that runs out, that runs to the tank to my rear, and of course, that is just fine. And there's some other benefits that come with getting your gun polarized. And at first is weight. Because the engine weighs only three quarters of a pound, by the time you take out the motor, your big heavy mech box and all the other junk that has to come out of this thing and you replace the fusion engine in there, then you have a lighter gun. And if you guys notice, haven't noticed yet, I'm kind of big keen on the accessories here. So anything that drops the weight of a system for me, especially for really long events like all day Milsim Ops, really helps out a bunch. So weight is another big factor. Also, accuracy. I'd heard some people say, well, you know, Polar Stars are great and all, but even at full auto, they're not that accurate. I'm going to tell you they must be crazy or they must install it the wrong way. This thing is a laser beam. It is super straight. In fact, it shoots better. I think it the way it's tuned in right now than the AEG body, the AEG system that was in it that got removed. Now, mind you, it was three years old. It was probably due for some serious tune-up work, but I'm going to tell you this. This thing is a tack driver with the build they have. And if you guys aren't familiar with how HPA systems work, most of your power is adjusted in a few different ways, primarily at the regulator, how much air is going into the system. The low end is typically around 80 PSI, or pounds per square inch of air, all the way up to 120 PSI, which is the high end. So the way they built this gun is right around 80, I'm getting that 350 feet per second range, and all the way up to the 120, I'm seeing really close to my field limits. So the sweet spot is where most of the fields I play at is right at 400 with a .2. Now they did this by using a red knob and a low flow poppet valve so I can get really good air efficiency. And again, this is why I look to Polar Star for my builds. Rather than just try to do it myself and get a brand new system I'm not familiar with and try to tear it down and do all this customization, I just put in the boxes what I need, send it off, and it gets built perfectly. And I'm gonna tell you what, they nailed it. Top, bottom, and middle, this thing is running great. 
Also, rate of fire on one is something just moderate. So they set it right in the middle, nothing insane. I'm not a, a BB hose here. In fact, most of what I'm doing is shooting semi-auto. And that's where I think the HPA systems, specifically the Polar Star, because of their trigger, which is just amazing, really excel, is that semi-auto fire. That's another thing, too, because they knew I was going to be doing a lot of semi-auto fire, because a lot of the Milsim events I go to, they set this trigger so perfect. In fact, it actually breaks right at the very back. I mean, very back of the pull. So when you get right to the end, it just clicks and it stops. So you can get those semi-auto shots off in a pinch. And the return is like a millimeter or two before the reset on the trigger. So this thing is just a semi-auto machine, which again is my play style. I guess if there's only one negative I have to say about this system, aside from you know my original concern about the line, which is no issue at all, would be the way it uses the battery. Because this system is always powered on when you have a battery plugged in, and it has like a small JST type connector, and it only requires a little 7.4 LiPo battery to run, it'll run it for a while, a few days. But if you forget and you leave the battery plugged in, unlike most AEGs, you're going to end up draining the battery to the point of no return and killing it. Now, it won't hurt the system, but it will kill that little battery. And they're, you know, not as common to find as a standard AEG battery because of the type connector and the size. So you may have a little bit, you know, trouble tracking one down. But again, that is my only complaint on this system. And after now having some experience with HPA, with other brand HPA systems, the fine tuning, the trigger, the rate of fire, everything, the ability to get this thing set up exactly the way you want it for your gun and running perfect really sets the Polar Star Fusion engine apart from the rest of the pack. So guys, if you're interested in doing the HPA thing, I can't say enough about getting the original. After having a few now and using them all, I've had a chance to use pretty much every brand HPA system out there. Not to say the other ones are bad, this one is just leaps and bounds ahead when it comes to the way it's tuned. And also, might I recommend, if you have a great shop that will do the install for you, use them. Or if you don't have one nearby, definitely check out the Polar Star guys and ship it off to them. Like I said, they set this thing up exactly the way I wanted it. So guys, I want to know what are your thoughts on the Fusion engine, or better yet, what are your thoughts on HPA as a whole? I mean, obviously it's a big investment. You got to buy the gun, you got to get the extra battery, which battery's cheap, but then you've got to get a tank and a regulator. And by the time you're all the way in between a donor gun, if you're going brand new, the engine and all that, you can be really close to a thousand dollars. The Fusion engine runs about five hundred dollars retail, but by the time you buy everything else, you're getting up there in the price tag. So what do you think? Is it pay for performance? I mean, to be honest with you, I didn't think I was going to like this. It's much as I did. I've been an AEG purist for so long. So uh, I want to know your thoughts though. Do you think HPA is the way of the future for Airsoft? Is it just kind of for the ones who want to run it? Or do you have another opinion? Let me know in the comment section below. Well guys, that's it for this episode of the Gear Guide. I'll be back in the next one where I review a very unique HPA gun that doesn't require remote airline, but rather you put the bike pump in the back, you pump it up, and you get 50 shots per go.